Okay, welcome. Today we're going to be doing a quick review to help get you ready for the assessment. All right, let's jump into that. All right, so first thing we went over were, uh, were these different kinds of simple structures. And in retrospect, we can now sort of see some of the, uh, some of the forms that, uh, that came to dominate architecture later in, in some of, of these simpler structures. So a lot of uh, grass, wood, simple stone in these ones. But uh, just to notice in this one, you've kind of got a very simple post and lintel. And then, you know, a shelter on the other side. In this one, a kind of a simple dome. You know, same thing in these ones right here, simple domes. Uh, that guy, very clearly a rectangular arch for the entrance and uh, something like a dome on top there. Um, once you're getting into the more more advanced houses, you can start to see uh, the triangular arches appear, the chimneys appear, the... Uh, the mortar and concrete appear, but uh, but but that's so again a lot of the structures that uh, the, the the forms in particular were present even in the the simplest structures and we can see that as we if you go back and look look through those could be an interesting exercise. Um, moving on from there, we went into some uh, important features that modern structures have, and the main thing I wanted to uh, take away from from this one was uh, the frame and how a frame can be made of a number of different features. For houses, uh, frame tends to be made of wood. For taller buildings, made of steel. For some some places and some houses, uh, depending on the building, you might make it out of brick. But all of these also have uh, concrete or in some cases like a brick foundation that you'll build on. And basically what that is, that's just a very you know heavy man-made stone that you you know you make it flat so that you can you can have your frame built on something sturdy so the frame won't move that's the that's the general idea behind behind what's going on there so foundation and frame two very important concepts that we saw in a lot of different a uh, lot of different structures um, moving into some of the stone forms that we saw um, here in these two on the left uh, was the, the stone post and lintel. You can see that here as well. Now, one of the, the key things that was important with the post and lintel was the ability to make things uh, perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. Um, the, the main way that they would make perfect verticals was through the use of a plumb bob. So as a reminder what that was, that was just like a little hanging weight. And, uh, and gravity would make sure that the line was completely vertical. So if you could line up your wall with, uh, with that vertical line from gravity, then you could, you could do that. Now, to make it horizontal, um, depending on what you wanted to do, you could use either a water level to make horizontal, or you could use that, uh, those special triangles that we talked about where one side had a length of four, another side had a length of three, <laughs> and the last side had a length of five, and that always made it so you had a uh, you had a right triangle in the in the in you know in 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 a right angle in that triangle. And if you had already had a vertical line, you could make sure that the line perpendicular to that was horizontal. So. Uh, we also saw the triangular arch as a common feature, and then this thing right here was the corbelled arch. Um, the main advanced stone feature that the Romans brought was the arch, the semicircular arch. And as a reminder, this center stone was called the keystone, and what kept that stone in place, what kept it from falling down, was basically in order to fall down, it would need to push these stones upward and outward and in order for that to happen a lot of times those stones would have to be pushed outward so as long as this thing was heavy enough um you know and these stones weren't weren't too easy to move then the arch would kind of stay in place now we did see that the arch had weaknesses here that that point that outward push was where the arch was most likely to fail so side bracing ended up being very important for these arches um, some of the some of the building technologies that the Romans in particular used, um, 
remember they they had these they had these arches and they used you know stacked arcades these rows of arches to make their aqueducts now also in their aqueducts same same aqueduct there um we saw them starting to use concrete they use the concrete in some of their large domes some of their large vaults um a dome remember being like an arch that's been kind of spun into a, a room shape a vault being kind of a, a long narrow arch that's turned into a hallway um and then this image shows kind of the example of these wooden roof trusses that were an improvement on the prop and lintel roofs that the Greeks and the Etruscans had been using. So, uh, so, so, yeah, the, the, the Romans made quite a few innovations, uh, not only in their materials, but also in their forms. Um, then we went into a number of different types of arches. So, uh, this first one was the pointed arch, and we saw those, those a lot in, uh, in the medieval architecture, Gothic architecture. This second one was a horseshoe arch. This third one was an Arabic arch. Um, this fourth one was a flat arch, and a uh, flat arch is somewhat similar to a post and lintel, um, and uh, it's, it's probably the most unique type of arch, but, uh, but it works along similar principles that the Roman arch worked on. Um, these two were quite similar. They were the parabolic arch, the fifth arch was the parabolic, and the sixth was the catenary arch. Um, the catenary arch, they, they do, they are similarly shaped, but the catenary arch is kind of the one that won out, ended up being just a more stable structure. And we saw that in the modern bridges, uh, that we looked at. So catenary arch becomes much more common. Um, going into the medieval period, we looked at a number of different things. We looked at sort of the simple defensive castles. We talked about the different defensive features they would have, so uh, crenellations, arrow slits, wall walks, things like that. Walls, ramparts um, to 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 keep things to keep things in in uh, you know keep to keep things secure. The the uh, the other type of architecture we had was the cathedral, and the the cathedral had a number of of pretty common features that we looked at. One was the tall spires on the steeples. Another that you can kind of see in this picture is the stained glass windows that were, you know, designed to be more ornamental, not not necessarily to illuminate. Um, in the main hall of the cathedral, you had this this gigantic ribbed vault called the nave. Into either side of it, you had the side aisles that we talked about. Um, another thing that that you had, you saw in a lot of these cathedrals to keep the vault propped up with these little, uh, they kind of look like half arches that were basically held there to, uh, what we call buttress the vault. And, uh, and those were called flying buttresses. So, uh, so that was, that was, that was kind of how the, the cathedral went. And we saw, uh, the, the, the castle, the defensive castle move towards these somewhat ornate castle palace type structures where they were built to more more to be impressive rather than to be defensive and those ultimately gave way to entire palace complexes that were not only built to to impress but also built to uh you know house administration to be comfortable to uh you know uh, you know allow a government to run to be operated out of them so so that was kind of the evolution of medieval architecture. Um, we did take a diversion into some bronze smelting technologies. I definitely think, or a bronze casting technologies, not smelting. We actually didn't look at smelting. That's something we'll look at later. But um, we talked about bells, the process for doing those, and then the process for making uh, cannons. And they're, they're actually pretty similar. Uh, it seems pretty clear that, uh, that you would, you would probably need to be good at bell casting before you could really get good at cannon casting. So reviewing those processes, maybe going back and watching those videos again, seeing if you can take a little bit more out of it might be a good, a good idea to prepare for, uh, for the assessment. Um, looking at the modern buildings, the main innovation we saw, it basically comes down to steel. Um, it's the steel frames, the steel trusses, the steel in the reinforced concrete um, that really made a lot of these things possible. So we're seeing a steel frame and the steel trusses are just everywhere. As opposed to solid steel pieces, you have these steel trusses and it's just this giant steel truss acting like a post. 
another giant steel truss acting like a lintel became very common. You, you put little pieces of steel in the concrete, makes it so much stronger. That was reinforced concrete. And with that, you can make things like the cantilever balconies, these long, um, you know, these long, high catenary arches for bridges, um, massively tall skyscraper buildings, and then just dams that can hold back, you know, millions of gallons of water and just, you know, hold it all in place. So some very impressive things made possible by steel. Um, so that is it. That is, that is the main thing to, uh, to, to be looking at when you're, when you're thinking about these things, um, to give some advice about uh, about how the assessment's going to be structured. So first thing, um, you want to know some of these basic terms. There'll be a, a short section on basic terms. So some of the things I've discussed. So what's a plumb bob? Things like that. How do you, you know, what does level mean? That kind of stuff. Um, then there'll be a rather long sequence of identification where you'll have to identify the forms from pictures. So um, definitely review all the, the main forms we've talked about, be able to identify them from pictures. Then we'll jump into some explanation. Um, an explanation is basically going to involve you trying to go from memory and explain, you know, how a particular form works, how particular something was made, something like that. And then the last section, probably be the trickiest, will be inference. You're going to be given a uh, given a new situation that you probably hadn't considered much and use your knowledge of architecture to sort of try to explain what's going on there. And that one may not be perfect. It may not be, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge, challenging sort of activity. So keep that in mind as you're going through the, uh, the assessment and, uh, and particularly in that last section, the inference section, it's a, it's a good opportunity to discuss with your teachers or parents about what's going on there. So uh, that is it for today. Thank you for tuning in this review. I'll see you later.